we can't keep running everything up the flag, Man City flagpole, can we? I mean, everything that goes up the Man City flag, every player that comes on the, on the radar, whether it's Cristiano Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo or XYZ person, will be indexed to Man City. I agree, but if you're talking £150 million for Harry Kane yeah. or £100 million for Lewandowski, what represents a better deal? Well, both of them are ugly deals in terms of the scale and scope of the finances of football. And, and neither one of them make the greatest economic sense given the age and stage that both players are at and the injury record of Harry Kane and where he is perhaps in his career it makes more sense to be buying Harry Kane Lewandowski is at the tail end of his career now undeniably 33. at 32 nearly 33 years of age he's going to be 33 in, a, in what two days time actually Yeah. Um, so you look at it and say that really is a here and now transaction That's there is no opportunity for any resale value of Lewandowski so so if you're going to pay you know that you do these deals when you take players like Edison Cavani in and you pay them fat wages because you're not paying a transfer fee so they make sense mm. you bring Robin Van Persie into Manchester United at a certain stage in his career you bring other players in that United have done whether it's Laurent Blanc at certain stages in their careers because you can make sense of the transaction but Lewandowski having to buy him for 100 million whatevers euros or pounds and then all that goes with him, to me, is a reach. And I don't think, despite everything landing at the door of the very wealthy owners of Man City or PSG or Chelsea, I don't think these guys are just uh, after anything at all costs. But Sammy, come They're, on. Look, look at what Lewandowski I, I has know, achieved. I know. Look I know. at what Harry's achieved. But it's, you, you, yeah, that's fine. Oh, no disrespect to Harry. Lewandowski, he's a Champions League winner, a UEFA Super Cup yep. winner. Yep. Uh, he's been a German champion nine but, times, but German that, Super Cup five times. You look in the list of trophies then, won by but Harry. That was then. None. That was the, yeah, yeah, sure. But look at the clubs they've played for. Bayern Munich, the, the German League, the, half the problems with Germany and the 50 plus one rule is that it's allowed particular clubs like German, Bayern Munich to dominate the league. And they have dominated the league. They've won it seven, eight times out of the last 10. So it's not surprising that the League's leading scorer plays for the best team that wins the league every year in mm. Germany with a few exceptions of course now where we are with Robin, Robin Lewandowski if he was 28 years of age and you were comparing like for like with Harry Kane and Robin Lewandowski then you'd run the argument but he's not he's 33 now I'm not suggesting that he's not capable of playing and operating at the highest level and continuing to operate at the level that he's operated historically but there is a balance of probability that sooner rather than later even the greatest players diminish True. And 33 years of age, I would suspect that paying paying top money for somebody that's going to give you a certain amount of return has a significant amount of risk attached to it. And you're not if they're going to come along and sign him for a year, right? Then you pay 100 million quid for a year plus probably 25 million pound in wages. Mm. If you're going to sign him for 3 years, <clears throat> what's he going to be like when he's 35? Yeah, but Simon, what about this aspect of it? Does it not give Manchester City a bit more flexibility that they didn't have before? Because if Daniel Levy continues not to budge on the Harry Kane deal, yeah, it depends if Man City can now say, you... "All right, we'll go elsewhere." And I tell you where the elsewhere is. Lewandowski. Sure, that's a potential argument that can be run by us in the media that suggests that everything's got to be run up the Man City flagpole when there's an opportunity to do so. But when you talk about the value and you say, OK, if you're paying £150 million for Harry Kane and you're paying £100 million for Lewandowski, Harry Kane is five years younger than Lewandowski. Mm. So then you compare the economics of the size of the transaction, which, by the way, let's be clear, like I said yesterday in a slightly flippant comment, what that kind of money falls out of these guys' pocket on the way to the game. It's mm. chump change. They're worth £320 billion. So £50 million quid here or there between them becomes a matter of principle. It's nothing to them. It's nothing to them. Yeah. So buy the right player for the right job and don't and then and then you know whilst we can see all these Machiavellian pieces being moved across the chessboard to try yeah. and create a leverage position on Daniel Levy and put, 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 put him in a pincer effect that you're going to lose this opportunity I don't think Daniel Levy really worries too much about whether they lose this opportunity because mm. he's still got three years left on Harry Kane and still got an opportunity to progress at Tottenham Hotspur and there might be a moral victory to be had if he actually won the battle of not selling him to Man City at Man City's preferred price